Hello everyone, this is John Hashmet and welcome to Physics Simply. In this video I will be solving the paper 2 exam for October-November 2020 variant 1. So let's get started. Question 1 says, for which one of the following measurements would a micrometer screw gauge be most suitable? The length of this page, is, which is too long for a micrometer, the length of a pencil also too long, diameter of a wire, this is actually appropriate diameter of an atom that's too small for a micrometer so the answer is C question 2 says the speed time graph represents a journey how does the graph show that the distance traveled in section X of the journey is greater than the distance traveled in section Y so the distance from a speed time graph is uh, given by the area under the graph so the area under port X is greater than the area under port Y so the choices are the area below X is uh, greater than the area below Y. So the answer is A. That is the correct answer. Question 3 says a car is traveling at velocity 2 meters per second. It accelerates at a constant 0.2 meter per second squared for 2.5 minutes. What is the final velocity? We can use the equation V equals U plus AT where U is uh, 2 meters per second plus A 0.20. Then we multiply it by the time, which is 2.5, but we have to multiply it by 60 since the uh, acceleration is per second squared, not per minute squared. That gives an answer of 32 meters per second. Question 4 says, which quantity is weight an example of? Uh, the weight is a force, so the answer is B. Question 5 says, a sphere P made of steel has weight 10 newtons on Earth. Another sphere Q, also made of steel, has weight 10 newtons of Mars. The gravitational field strength on Earth is greater than the gravitational field strength on Mars. Using the equation weight equals mg, as field strength decreases, the mass must increase for them to have the same weight, 10 newton. So the mass of Q must be greater than the mass of P. Which statement is correct? The mass of P is the same as the mass of Q? No. The mass of sphere P is less than the mass of Q? Yes, since uh, MQ is greater than MP, so the answer is B. Question 6 says, a metal ball is attached to a cork and is lowered into a measuring cylinder, pulling the cork into the water as shown. The first volume uh, without anything except water is 48 centimeter cubed, with the ball alone is 56 centimeter cubed, with the ball and the cork is 80 centimeter cubed. The mass of the cork is 4.8 grams and we are required to calculate the density of the cork. So we actually do not need the first diagram. We need the difference between uh, the water with the ball and then the water with the ball and cork. So we calculate the density mass over volume 4.8 divided by the difference between 80 and 56. That gives an answer of 0.2 grams per centimeter cubed so the answer is B question 7 says a uniform plank rests on a pivot at its center uh, uniform means the weight is at its center and the pivot is at its center as well so the weight has no moments uh, two children P and Q sit on the plank in positions shown uh, distance 1.2 and 1.5 meters from the pivot the mass of child P is 25 kilograms so uh, the weight of the child P is 25 times 9.8 at a distance 1.2. The plank is balanced. What is the mass of child Q? So using the equation clockwise moments is equal to anti-clockwise moments. We can say that the force of child Q, which is the weight multiplied by 9.8, the weight is uh, mass times gravity field strength. Then we multiply it by the distance 1.5 is equal to the weight of the other child, 25 times 9.8, multiplied by the distance 1.2. 9.8 cancels the 9.8 on the other side, so we have the mass equals to 25 times 1.2. Then we divide by 1.5, that gives an answer of 20 kilograms, so the answer is A. Question 8 says, the diagram shows three forces acting on an object. What is the value of the resultant force acting on the object? First, we can uh, eliminate the 1 newton to the left and subtract it from the 9 newton, making there is a resultant horizontal force of 8 newtons to the right. 
and we have a vertical force of 6 newtons upwards and we need to calculate the resultant so drawing them uh, head to tail you get a right angled triangle and we want to find the resultant which can be calculated using Pythagoras which is the square root of 8 squared plus 6 squared making the answer 10 newtons so the answer is B question 9 says an object with a mass of 0.20 kilograms moves at a speed of 0.20 meters per second as shown which other object has momentum that is identical to the momentum of this object so we have uh, the momentum equals mass times velocity so the total momentum of this object is 0.04 kilograms meters per second and is directed to the right so anything other than to the right can be cancelled out leaving only c to be correct question 10 says a stone is dropped from rest at a height of two meters above the surface of a planet the planet has no atmosphere the speed of the stone just before reaching the surface of the planet is 3.8 meters per second what is the acceleration of free fall so we have u equals zero from rest and v equals 3.8 and the distance is two meters and we want to find the acceleration we can use the equation v squared equal u squared plus 2as substituting by these numbers we have 3.8 squared equals 0 plus 2 multiplied by the acceleration unknown multiplied by the distance or the displacement 2 then we divide by these two on the other side giving an answer of 3.61 approximating it to 3.6 makes the answer c Question 11 says, an electric motor uses 1000 joules of electrical energy. It provides 450 joules of useful output energy. What is the efficiency of the motor? We can use the output energy divided by the input energy times 100. That gives an answer of 45%. The next question says, to calculate the power produced by a force, the size of the force must be known. What else needs to be known to calculate the power? The distance is needed uh, to calculate the work, force times distance, and the time is needed to divide energy or work by time to calculate power. So the answer is A. Question 13 and 14 are uh, eliminated from the new syllabus, but I will uh, solve them so you can skip these two questions. A barometer reads a 780 millimeters mercury. Uh, mercury has a density of 1.36 times 10 to the power of 4 kilograms per meter cubed. What is the pressure of the atmosphere in Newton per meter squared, which is actually the uh, base units or the SI units? So we can use the equation pressure equals rho GH multiplying 1.36 times 10 to the power of 4 by G 9.8 by the H in meters. So 780 divided by 1000. This gives an answer of 103. 1958 uh, Pascal or Newton per meter squared which can be approximated to 1.1 times 10 to the power of 5 Newton per meter squared question 14 says a diagram shows a mercury barometer which height is used as a measurement of atmospheric pressure it's from the top of the mercury in the barometer to the top of the mercury in the dish so the answer is C Question 15 says, a student splashes water onto her face. Here are three statements about the effects. The water uses energy to evaporate. That's correct. Uh, the water gains energy from the students. That's correct. Also, the face of the student cools. That is also correct. Which statements are correct? All three. So P, Q, and R. Question 16 says, when a bridge is built, a gap is left between each concrete slab. Why are these gaps left? Is it because concrete expands on warm days? Yes. Concrete contracts on warm days? No. Uh, they expand. The gaps expand on warm days. The gaps contract on warm days? Also no. So the answer is A. Question 17 says the specific heat capacity of solid P is greater than that of solid Q. So CP greater than CQ. What does this uh, statement mean? Less energy is needed to raise the temperature by one degree uh, of unit mass of solid P 
than unit mass of solid Q. No, since the specific heat capacity of P is greater, it needs more energy, not less energy. Uh, less energy is needed to melt, not melt, uh, to raise temperature. More energy is needed to raise the temperature of P than unit mass of Q. Yes, so the answer is C. Question 18 is about latent heat, which is removed from the syllabus, so you can skip this question for the new syllabus. A student places a number of ice cubes in a container with a hole in the base. He left them to melt so that the water dripped into a beaker placed on a balance. The student recorded the initial mass of the beaker and the final mass of the beaker and water after five minutes. The specific latent heat of fusion of water is 334 joules per gram, but the mass is measured in kilograms, so we will need to convert that. We multiply it by 1000. How much energy was absorbed from the surroundings in order to melt the ice? The equation is Q equals ML, uh, which is the latent heat. The mass is the difference between the two readings, so 0.16 minus 0.05. Then we multiplied by the latent heat capacity, which is 334 times 10 to the power of 3, making the answer 37,000 joules, so the answer is C. Question 19 says the diagram shows four rods. Each rod is made of different metal. Wax is used to attach small metal balls at uh, the rod ends, P, Q, R, and S. Each rod is the same size. They are heated uniformly by a Bunsen burner at point X. As the rods warm up, the wax melts and the balls fall off. Why does the ball on the silver rod fall first? That's because conduction happens first in silver or fastest in silver so is silver is the best conductor of heat yes that is the answer question 20 says four cups a b c and d contain hot coffee which cup keeps the coffee warm the longest so that means that it is the worst emitter of infrared radiation or the poorest conductor or something like that so the outside surface of the cup is black or white it's white so it does not emit enough energy the top of the cup is covered with a lid or not covered with a lid. It's covered with a lid to reduce convection or evaporation. So the answer is C. Question 21 says, which row correctly described light waves? Uh, is it longitudinal or transverse? It's transverse. The direction of vibration is perpendicular to the direction of wave travel. So the answer is D. Question 22 says the diagram shows part of a diffracted wave pattern. Changes are made to the wavelength and the gap size to produce a semicircular diffraction. Semicircular diffraction, that means more diffraction. Since it's, uh, it was a straight line, then bendings at the edges, we need to increase the diffraction to make it semicircular. Which row produces the required semicircular diffraction? So we need the gap to be as close as possible to the wavelength. Here the gap is too wide, so we need uh, the gap to be narrower, but it is not in the options, so we choose the same. And we need to increase the wavelength to reach the size of the gap, so larger wavelength. So the answer is C. Question 23 says, which statement about the thin converging lens is correct? All rays of light refracted by the lens pass through the principal focus, not all the rays, so it's not A. All rays initially parallel to the principal axis of the lens are refracted through the principal focus. Yes, that is correct. So the answer is B. Uh, C and D says the focal length of the lens is the distance between the image and the principal focus, not the image. The focal length uh, is the length between the object and the image. Also, again, not related to the object or image. So it's B. Question 24 says the diagram shows white light passing through a prism. Which description of what happens as the light passes into the prism is correct. The speed of the red light is less than the speed of the violet light. No, actually violet uh, changes speed more than red. So, no. The speed of the red light is greater, yes. Uh, the speed of the violet light is less, yes. The speed of the violet light is greater, no. So, it's either B or C. Then the speed of violet. Uh, and the red light is least diffracted yes that the red light uh, has the least uh, change in direction so it is the least diffracted so the answer is b question 25 says which row gives possible values for the speed of sound uh, in gas in liquid and in solid 
In gas like air, air uh, has a speed of 340 meters per second, so it's in the hundreds. In liquids like water, water has a speed of 1500, so this one. In solids like steel or concrete, it's 5000, so we need a high speed, so the answer is A. Question 26 says a police car uh, with its siren sounding in the uh, stationary in heavy traffic, a pedestrian notices that although the loudness of the sound does not change, the pitch varies. So loudness is related to amplitude. Loudness does not change, so the amplitude is constant. Frequency is related to pitch, so that is varying, making the answer B. Question 27 says, a piece of steel is lightly magnetized, it is hit several times with a hammer, what effect will this have on the steel? If you place the steel parallel to a strong magnetic field, hammering it would help it get magnetized even more, so it becomes magnetized more strongly. Placing it at right angles to the field, uh, that causes uh, the atoms to lose their orientation or the electrons to lose their orientation, so it loses its magnetism. So the answer is B. Question 28 says, two soft iron pins are suspended from the S-pole of a bar magnet, which diagram shows how the pins are deflected. So this is magnetization by induction. So the south pole would induce N poles near it and S poles far apart from it or far away from it. So these are S, all these are S. So S poles should repel each other, making the answer C. The next question says a negatively charged plastic rod is brought near to an uncharged metal sphere. So we have a negatively charged rod and a metal sphere, uh, which is neutral. What happens when the metal sphere is earth? So at first, the negative charges move away and the positive charges remain in place. Earthing that uh, system makes the earth feel that there is more negative charges than positive charges. So the extra negative charges are removed from the sphere. So electrons flow from the metasphere to Earth. That is the correct answer. Question 30 says, which statement defines the electromotive force of a cell? It is the energy needed to move a unit charge across a complete circuit. So is it the current? No, it is not the current. It is the energy supplied by the cell to drive one coulomb of charge around the complete circuit. Yes, so the answer is C, not one ampere, one coulomb of charge. Question 31 says, uh, four wires are made of the same metal. Which wire has the greatest resistance? Greatest resistance, that is the greatest length and the smallest diameter, so it's A. Question 32 says, in which circuit is there just a single lamp lit? So we have to make the current actually go through the circuit. So any diode connected in reverse next to the battery uh, cannot be chosen. So this one, the current should go through this way, so it cannot be B, and it cannot be D, since neither uh, one of the lamps will work. In A, we have the current moving like this. It can go through the upper lamp and the lower lamp, so it's not A, we need only one lamp to be working. In C, it's correct, since the current can go through the lower lamp, but cannot pass the diode connected in reverse, making the answer C. Question 33 says, a student uses four ammeters P, Q, R, and S to measure the current in different parts of the circuit shown. Which two ammeters read the largest current? Since we have a branch or a parallel connection here, the outer current is the largest current or the current which passes through the battery. So it would be the ammeters P and Q. So the answer is A. Question 34 is about logic gates, so you can skip it for the new syllabus. Which combination of logic gates gives the truth table shown? We have here uh, 0 and 0 gives 1. We have uh, 0 and 1 gives 1. 1 and 0 gives 1. 1 and 1 gives 0. That is the opposite of an AND gate. That's an AND gate. So we have an AND gate that is then reversed by a NOT gate, making the answer B. Question 35 says a transformer is needed to convert supply of 240 volts AC into 4,800 volts AC. Uh, which pair of coils would be suitable for this transformer? Number of turns on the primary and number of turns on the secondary. The voltage of primary over voltage 
to secondary is equal to number of primary over number to secondary the voltages are 240 over 4800 this gives a ratio of 1 over 20 so we need to divide these numbers by each other to find which is the correct answer if you divide 50 by 1000 that gives 1 over 20 which is the answer if you divide the next one that gives 1 over 200 the next one gives 20 and the next one gives 20 also so uh, all these values are wrong leaving the answer to be a question 36 says the diagram shows part of a long current carrying conductor at which point is a magnetic field strongest around a straight wire there is a circular magnetic field and the field is strongest near the current so the answer is c question 37 says a beam of particles moves through a magnetic field in which situation do the particles experience a magnetic force the charged particles must be moving uh, perpendicular to the magnetic field so it's not parallel to the magnetic field either this or that so a beam of beta particles moving perpendicularly across the magnetic field lines or a beam of neutrons neutrons are not charged so they will not have a magnetic force acting on them making the answer c question 38 says which statement is correct for the nucleus of any atom the nucleus contains electrons that's not correct the nucleus contains the same number of protons and neutrons that's not necessary uh, the nucleus has a total charge of zero no because it contains uh, protons which are positively charged the nucleus is very small compared to the size of the atom that is correct question 39 says uh, two beams of radiation p and q enter an electric field as shown which type of radiations are p and q so uh, it cannot be gamma radiation since gamma is not charged and it will, uh, will not be deflected in an electric field uh, the one that is attracted to the positive charge and has a great deflection it must be beta particle and the one heavier uh, moving slowly towards the negative plate it must be an alpha particle so the answer is a the last question says which equation represents the beta decay of lead 209 uh, the decay has a beta emitted after uh, an explosion which means that it cannot be before the arrow in the equation also beta decay increases the proton number by one since one neutron is converted into one proton like here from 82 to 83 making the answer c this was the end of the exam i hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful i will see you in another video